and this is the Bottom Line Live. This is pretty exciting. Tonight we're going to talk about bookkeeping best practices. Okay, now as I always do, I have to share this into the Wealth Dynamics group. So give me like one second. I know you have to like, you can't do this before the live starts. You have to do it after. So this is, this is where we're at. But I know you, you all saw my little promo I sent out. And we're going to talk about bookkeeping best practices. I know that bookkeeping is always the most exciting topic for us to talk about and um, remains so. You know, it's like, what do you always want to talk about on a Thursday night? You want to talk about your bookkeeping. Is it tax season right now? Yes. Might you have questions on what you should be doing and what your CPA needs to see? You might. All right, the bottom line live. All right, here we go. I shared it. So now, let's see here. There's this pop up in the way. I need like tech support on my bottom line live. Okay, good. So, um, thank you all for joining. I know that um, I'm building a fan base and everyone loves to jump in and watch this on every Thursday night, so I appreciate you being here. Um, and if you're not watching it live and you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this later, thank you for watching it as well. I'm glad that you also think bookkeeping is one of the most interesting subjects, like I do. All right, so, one of the first things, you know, I like watching it in, in this view because then I have, I can see when people wave and when people log in. Oh, I guess that's when I do it on my phone and I stopped doing it on my phone because it didn't work that one time. All right, good. So without further ado, let's start talking about bookkeeping best practices. Okay, so obviously there are a lot of best practices and I probably won't be able to cover them all here today in my half an hour. But I am going to talk about some of them and, um, you know, if you guys have any questions on specifically, you know, specific things, feel free to ask your questions and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So, okay, so the first thing to know is if you are a business, your taxes are due on the 15th of March. If, um your personal taxes are due on the 15th of April. So that means that you are all hustling and getting your books together to send to your CPAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, a lot of you are also expecting that you're going to be filing an, ex an extension, which, you know, probably 90% of the businesses that I do bookkeeping for do file for extensions, and that's totally fine. And they file their tax. If you extend, then the extension dates are September 15 and October 15. So there'll be another, you know, tax season basically at uh, closer to that. So like August, September, October. So I'm sure I'll be talking a lot more about taxes then as well. But keep that in mind. So now, what is your CPA going to want to see from you? they're going to want to see um, your numbers. So what does that mean? They need your profit and loss statement. They need to know how much you spent on all the tax deductible items. Um, how much did you spend on marketing? How much did you spend on office expenses? All these things like that. And they need to see your balance sheet. So they need to see what are your balances in your different accounts, um, in your bank accounts, credit cards, loan accounts, all these different things. So that's what you need to be putting together for them. Now, what's the best way to do that throughout the year? I love how I, I give um, Jerry a topic and then he gives me all these like talking points. It, it makes my life really easy of like, here's the things when he makes the promo, like, oh, here's all these things that fit under your topic. So, um, so I'll just start going through these because these are all really good questions. Should you keep your personal and business income and purchases separate? Now, I have heard people say to me, 
Um, my CPA said just put everything through the business. I heard several people say that to me. And I don't know exactly if they misunderstood the CPA or if the CPA was just trying to keep things, uh, keep you from losing deductions by paying from them personally. But here's basically what you should do. You should have at least two bank accounts, one for your business and one for your personal. And everything that has to do with business might have to do with business is partially having to do with business run it through your business bank account. But let's say you're buying groceries for your family. You probably don't need to run that through your business bank account because it's not a business expense. It's pretty clearly not a business expense. Um, you know, if you are buying groceries for a meal for your employees, that could be a business expense. But if you're buying groceries for you and your family, buy it on your personal account. If you are going to out to eat, you're going to a restaurant with you and your family, buy it on your personal account. It's a personal expense. Um, if you have the intention of having a business meeting and talking about your business and your spouse is a business partner, okay, fine, that's separate. But not every time you go out to eat with your family are you generally intending to have it be about your business. So keep that in mind is what was the intention is it an ordinary and usual business expense? So groceries are always, almost always, 99.9% .9 of the time going to be personal. Um, going out to eat with your family is going to be personal. If you go to Disneyland or Disney World with your family, it's gonna be personal. So keep this in mind. If something is for your business, run it through your business. And if it's personal, run it through your personal. Now, how do you, let's say you put all of your income into your business account because it's all business income and you're not yet an S corporation, you're not running payroll. What's the best way to get money from your business account to your personal account? Just transfer the money. Tra you know, do a bank transfer once a week for however much money you need for your you know, personal expenses. If it ends up being that you have to transfer money more than once a week, do that, do whatever you need. I mean, I wouldn't recommend every day doing like 10, 10 transfers of $150 or something because that just seems like a lot of um, bookkeeping to keep track of, but definitely put money into your personal account so you use it for personal. And what does that do on your business account? You're just going to track that as an owner's draw or a shareholder distribution, same thing. It just shows money went from the business to the personal. So you can keep it really simple. If you, if you are a check kind of person and you want to write checks, you can absolutely write the checks as well. I'm a um, you know no paper kind of person, so I try to do everything online through transfers, you know, so, but you do need to keep it separate and that is how you get the money over. As soon as you are um, making a lot of money and you do your S Corp election, you're going to set up payroll and then you're going to be doing distributions and you're going to get payroll. But that's a topic for another time and one that we've also covered before. Okay. So there's a lot of reasons for that. The first one being that you're going to save money on taxes by keeping track of all your business expenses in your business bank account. Because how many of you have done this three day nightmare at the end of the year when you're trying to do your taxes and you just sit down and you try to go through all your bank accounts and credit cards and try to find all the business expenses and you're hiding in the closet with a box of receipts and bank statements and your wife's knocking on the door asking if you're okay and you're, you know, have a coffee and maybe, you know, a glass of something that's not coffee and you're just, it's the most stressed out thing ever. All of my clients tell me about this, so I know this phenomenon exists. The, the hiding in the closet with the shoebox full of receipts and your computer for days trying to work this out. So this is why we're not going to do that. We're going to have all business expenses in a business bank account so that it's really easy to see what you spent your money on for your business. You don't have to scour through it and do math and algebra and cry in order to you know, get your numbers. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna connect your business bank account to some kind of bookkeeping software. Um, you know, I prefer QuickBooks as soon as you have um, a big enough company. If you're just starting out, you can use, um, 
uh, Herdler, which you get a free subscription. If you have a Mint Builder subscription, you get free Herdler, Tax Herdler, and that tracks business expenses as well. As soon as you have, you know, like kind of as soon as you're kind of separated out and you have just your business account and all of everything going, then switch over to QuickBooks. Uh, you can start with QuickBooks Simple Start. If you need help setting it up, you can always schedule a consultation with me and I can help you set that up. Uh, most bookkeepers can help you set it up. So you don't have to, uh, you know, reach out to me if you like somebody else more. I'll only, I'll only be a little sad. But really, I won't mind. Just get someone to help you set it up. The next reason it's really important to have your business and personal transactions separate is especially if you have an LLC or you have uh, an S-Corp election for your LLC is you have this thing called the corporate veil. You have to show that your business is a separate entity from you personally. So if you have it all in one bank account and you ever got sued or ever got in legal trouble, a lawyer could show that it's not a separate legal entity because you are buying things personally out of your business account or buying things for your business out of your personal account and you're just one person and you do not have a separate entity and you lose your liability protection. So those are the two reasons you wanna have it separate. Now, should you, next item on the list, should you separate out accounting and bookkeeping functions? That's a very good question. That one, I would really say that it depends. Um, let's say you have a CPA firm and they have a couple of bookkeepers working for them and they do full service bookkeeping. You know, They can do your payroll and your sales tax and they can keep your bookkeeping up to date every month and they do a great job, great. Use them because they already are doing your um, accounting at the end of the year and that's a great setup. I personally haven't ever seen that setup work. Um, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, it just means I haven't seen it. Whenever a CPA also does bookkeeping, they get too busy to do the bookkeeping, you don't get reports, um, you know, payroll sometimes falls behind, things like that. So I would personally recommend having a bookkeeper and your tax preparer CPA separate. Um, I've seen it work best that way. That way your payroll gets done on time, you get your bookkeeping reports every month or every quarter, whatever you're paying for, and this, you know, the bookkeeper can send the CPA or tax preparer reports and all they have to do is file the taxes. Again, if you have a unicorn, amazing CPA that has bookkeepers in their office and they can do all of it and they can do your payroll and do everything, then great, you should use them because they are a unicorn and they are amazing and you should keep them. If you don't have that and you're not getting your reports and um, you don't know how much money you have or spending on business, your payroll is being done late, it's not gonna be a good fit. You're gonna wanna find um, a bookkeeping firm or a bookkeeper to do your books and keep that separate from your tax prep. A lot of and most CPAs and tax preparers just file taxes, you know what I mean? They have a lot of clients, it's a high turnaround as far as like they get your, your documents, they fill out the forms, they file it. Right now, if you try talking to your CPA, you are probably out of luck because they only have five days left till the next filing deadline, then they've got another month until the personal filing deadline. So getting a hold of a tax preparer or CPA right now is almost impossible. Getting a hold of your bookkeeper is a little easier. Um, we pretty much finished everything we needed to do for for tax season for the CPAs. So that's going to be, um, you know, your next best thing. Now, if your CPA does tax planning, now is not the time to talk to them about tax planning. You're going to want to wait until after they're done filing taxes and talk to them. So you can either talk to them mid-year if you haven't really done tax planning for this year yet. I'd recommend, you know, May or June is a good time. And the best time to do tax planning is gonna be at the end of the year for next year. So after the tax filing season, so after October 15th, so the end of October, November, December, before Christmas, you're gonna to wanna to do tax planning for next year. If your CPA does that, um, they often don't tell you that they do that and they don't do it. Like sometimes people go, well, how come my CPA never told me that? You have to ask for tax planning. It doesn't just happen. Um, I haven't seen any CPAs or tax preparers just offer it, almost none, 
unless that's kind of their specialty. So if you want tax planning, you have to ask your CPA for it. If your CPA doesn't offer it or you don't have a CPA, uh, we've partnered with Tax Hive and they do tax planning for free as part of your tax filing. So definitely reach out to me and I can connect you with them. But that is a separate function. That would be like asking your CPA about your life insurance. Like they, you know, it's a whole separate thing. Unfortunately, in finances, there's such a wide uh, array of things that have to do with finances. You've got medical insurance and all the other insurances, life insurance and everything that goes with that. You've got uh, corporate structure and setting up LLCs. There's payroll, there's bookkeeping, and that can all be done usually by the bookkeeper. Then you've got tax preparation and filing and tax planning. That usually gets done by the CPA. Um, the insurance and the life insurance usually doesn't get done by the CPA. Then you've got investments and you've got, you know, setting up trust. Like there's all these different types of functions. So I've never seen a place that does all of them. So just realize that uh, you're going to have quite a few different people that you have to talk to to get everything that you need done, which is why Jerry also recommends once you have that money going that you get a uh, family office and hire people under you to do some of these different functions because there's a lot of different functions and they're usually done by separate people and you know sometimes maybe we wish it wasn't that way but they're specialized in their area just like when you know a company is a marketing company that doesn't mean that they do everything maybe they just build websites maybe they just do search engine optimization maybe they just do LinkedIn like you have to find out what they do because I haven't seen a company that does every single thing having to do with marketing as much as it seems to me like it should all be in one place because it's all marketing. Finances is the same. It's all separated out and done by different people. Like you're, the guy that is doing your search engine optimization might not be doing your graphic design. You know what I mean? It's like that. Okay. How frequently should you reconcile your bank account? So every month. Every month, I actually um, have run into this. It's very interesting where sometimes when a CPA, because CPAs don't really do bookkeeping usually, they usually just do what they need to do to file your taxes. Sometimes when a CPA goes to uh, do your books or look at your books, they'll reconcile the entire year in one and just throw in an adjustment for whatever it doesn't reconcile. And that just hurts my feelings so much. So reconciliations for the bank account are done every month. Now, let's say you have someone doing weekly bookkeeping for you. Like we have several clients that we do their bookkeeping weekly and we do a financial plan for them. We pay all their bills. We do their payroll, all that. We actually will go and reconcile every week to make sure that it's still balancing and we know how much is in the bank account. We don't click the button that says close reconciliation because that is specifically done once a month, but we'll do what's called a soft reconciliation. So we will just go and make sure that the number is balanced for the week and nothing is missing, nothing is extra, and then we'll be able to do their financial plan based on what's in their books. So keep that in mind. You can't reconcile a whole year. You reconcile month by month for each account, including your loan accounts, guys. If you have a car loan for your, that you're doing for business, you reconcile it every month. You gotta get that interest in there. If you don't reconcile it every month, you are losing business deductions because the interest doesn't show up usually. It's split between principal and interest, so you have to get the interest in there. The interest that you pay on a business loan is tax deductible. The other reason you want to reconcile every month is because let's say there was a glitch, or let's say you entered a payment in, but QuickBooks also entered it in, and each payment was for $10,000, and you didn't notice that now it's in there twice, do you want to pay taxes on an extra $10,000 that doesn't exist? No, you do not. So that's why you reconcile to make sure that what's in your bank matches what's in your books and you're not showing any more or less so your taxes are accurate. You never want to overpay your taxes, so that's why you reconcile. Okay, here is the next one. I love this. I just have a whole list. I don't even have to like come up with my own ideas. Okay. When should you review your financials, your financial reports? Okay, so here's the deal, guys. The more often you review it, the better control you have over your company. So if you are only doing bookkeeping for taxes and you, like, never look at your reports, you know, fine, your taxes will be accurate. At least you'll have that. 
But if you are trying to figure out how to expand your business, how to make more money, uh, reconcile finances, Nano, I'm talking about reconciling bank accounts, credit card accounts, and loan accounts. Reconcile means to make sure they match. So whatever you entered in your books matches what's in your bank account. Reconcile. Well, hold on. Here you go. Reconcile. Um, okay, so back to uh, how often should you look at your reports. So my clients that we do their bookkeeping, most of them, they were doing their bookkeeping once a month. So as soon as we do the bookkeeping, we send them reports and we hope that they look at them. Uh, if you have any questions on them at that point, you know, you can ask your bookkeeper if you, there's any changes. Maybe your bookkeeper thought that that was office supplies, but really it was materials for, you know, a business project that you're doing. Like the bookkeeper is going to have their best guess based on your history. But, you know, sometimes the bookkeeper's guess is going to be wrong. So you need to tell them actually it was this, actually it was that, whatever it is. So you want to be able to have that for your taxes. If you want to also look at it for financial planning, like how often do I look at my numbers? I look every few days. I know how much money I made. I'm gonna how much money it looks like I'm gonna make for the week, for the month. If I need to change what I'm doing, um, I get all my KPIs, you know, my uh, key indicators from my P&L. So if I want to know how much money came in that week, I just run my P&L because I do my bookkeeping like almost every day, right? I, I update it. If I want to know how much I spent, how much payroll is gonna be, I look in there. So when I'm doing my financial planning, I am looking at those every few days, maybe at least once a week. I sit down and go, here's what came in for the week. So now here's my income. Here's you know what I need to be setting aside for. Here's the payroll. How much do I have left? How do I best want to allocate that? How do I best want to invest my money to make more money? So I would say minimally, you need to be looking at it once a month when you get your bookkeeping um, and look at it like if you're trying to really manage and organize your business, which you should be, once a week you should be looking at this to make a financial plan. I know I have some clients that we do their bookkeeping you know, quarterly, they have smaller companies, things like that. Okay, fine, just make sure you're looking at them quarterly. And if you don't have any other access to your numbers, you might wanna ask for your bookkeeping to be more often. So, you know, I try to work with clients, like how often do they wanna see the books, things like that. But you need to be able to manage your business and we manage based on numbers and KPIs and you know whatever you wanna call it, your measurements, your statistics. So that's very important. Okay, what is the best way to keep detailed payable and receivable records? Oh, that's a really good point. Okay, so in QuickBooks, um, you can actually use it to enter invoices and bills. So when someone owes you money, you do work, you can send them an invoice. Not all of us have businesses where you have to send invoices out, but um, if you do have to send invoices, you can create them in QuickBooks and then it will track you, it will track for you how much money is outstanding, how much money you're owed, how much money you received. You can also do the same thing for your bills. If your company receives bills, you can enter them in QuickBooks and you can easily have a report of how much money you owe and when it's due, things like that. If you don't want to enter it in QuickBooks and you just want to track it, I would recommend having an Excel spreadsheet and putting in at least you know your bills coming in so you can always have a date line of when to pay it by based on you know the earlier an earlier webinar I did. You want to always know your business bills. I mean, on your personal side, you can do this as well if you're organized enough. I know a lot of you are using Mint.com, but you want to know what bills are coming out. If they're on auto pay, okay, fine. Just make sure you allocate enough money in your financial plan so it's coming out. But if you actually have to click pay or write a check, keep a spreadsheet with your bills. When they're due, how much they're due, um, all that stuff. Keep it separate. Okay, good. What's the next thing? Do you back up accounting software and where to? Okay, so this depends on what type of software you're using. I know a lot of accountants and uh, CPAs and tax payers would recommend backing up your software. I use QuickBooks online and I've never had any problems, so we personally don't back up um, QuickBooks online. But you can if you want to. There's a software called Rewind and you can back up your QuickBooks online to that. If you have QuickBooks desktop 
and it's saved just on your computer or on your um, server, you 100% want to back that up because they, the QuickBooks desktop files that are on your computer easily can get corrupted and you might click delete or whatever. So you 100% want to make backups and I don't, um, there's not a software you use for it. There's just a button that you click on there and say make backup and it'll store a backup copy. So you 100% want to do that. Um, you know, you would want to do that every time you make changes as up, create a backup copy minimally, you know, once a month or whatever. But think about this. If you accidentally delete your file and you have no backup on your QuickBooks desktop, it's gone. All your information is gone. So you want to make a backup probably every time you use it so you don't have to recreate it. Now, if you are on online, I haven't ever seen that be a problem, but that doesn't mean you can't back it up. Or if you're using a cloud-based software, you know, if their server goes down, you might be effed, but hopefully that never happens. You can absolutely back it up. You can use a software called Rewind. Okay. Um, do you review payroll and tax notices as they come in? A hundred percent. You're getting tax notices, payroll notices, because they are important. You want to make sure that it doesn't say that you need to do something or you owe money that you didn't know about. If you have a bookkeeper, whenever you get those notices, you should send them to your bookkeeper. If you don't have them, just read them and try to make sure you understand what they mean. Luckily, the IRS and the states, as annoying as they are, are usually trying to be helpful when you call them. So if you have any questions or you don't understand it, call the phone number on there and get help so you make sure you understand it. You don't want to just put them all in a pile because then one day the IRS could levy your accounts, meaning just take your money and they'll say, yeah, we've been warning about you, warning you about this for a year, but you never uh, read the notices because you were just going to give them to your CPA at the end of the year or whatever. So you've got to read those if they come in, especially with payroll. It can get very complicated and get a lot of letters. If you have a, C if you have a um, bookkeeper, send them to your bookkeeper. If you have a CPA that's helping you on payroll, send them to your CPA. If you don't have anyone, read the notices and call the number on the notice if you don't understand what it means. But you want to make sure that you don't get to a point where the IRS or the state can levy your accounts, meaning steal your money without uh, asking you, because they're allowed to, they just have to give you notice. So always make sure you read those notices. Okay, how often should you meet with a tax professional for tax planning? At least once a year. Um, again, you could even do it twice a year if you know things change, or you could kind of do a mid-year check-in in like May or June, but Definitely at the end of each year after tax season, let's say October, November, December, you want to meet with your tax professional, your tax planner, your CPA. You want them to look at everything that you know you just did for the year. You want to talk to them about any upcoming plans. If you're planning on buying a new vehicle, if you're planning on buying a new property, if you're planning on moving, if you're planning on opening another company, if you're planning on you know, moving money out of your 401k, or at, or you should even talk to them about what are some things I can do to save money in my tax bracket. There's not always things you can do to save money as far as like different than what you're already doing. You know, there is unfortunately this like kind of tax bracket that you can be in where there is, all you can do is have as many business expenses if, as you can. But like, let's say you are on W-2 and you're an employee and you don't have any business expenses because you don't have a business, your tax planner might recommend opening a business. You know, start selling something on the side so that you can have business deductions because W-2 employees don't get any business deductions anymore. So you, um, they might tell you that. They might tell you to open a 401k, which you should talk to Nano and Jerry about because they have... Uh, self-directed ones which are going to probably be better for you than what you could just find you know online but there are ways to save you money but sometimes maybe you're already doing all of those things and you're gonna to have to make more money before you can get into the next tax bracket where there's new cooler things you can do so but you should talk to your CPA tax preparer to do tax planning at least once a year at the end of the year for the following year and then you know brush up check up with them mid-year as things change right very important. Okay, I'm talking fast because I'm running out of time. Apparently, there's a lot of bookkeeping best practices. All right. So, um, oh, that was like the end of the list. And so I don't know if there's any other things that I wanted to talk to you about, but those were the main ones. Let me know if anybody has 
any questions. Um, if you do need bookkeeping software and you don't have it yet, please reach out to me. I can get you set up. If you need tax planning and you haven't gotten it yet, also reach out to me. I will get you set up with Tax Hive. Um, and if you just need help and you just need a consultation, reach out to me as well. I help businesses of all sizes. Um, whether if you just started and just want a consultation to get set up, I did a few of those this week, or whether you have a huge business and you've never done bookkeeping, we can get you set up on bookkeeping, or you just need a new bookkeeper because your last bookkeeper, you know, got COVID last year and hasn't been back in the office. And I'm giving you real life examples here of things that have happened. So whatever you need help with, whatever size your business is, I can help you. Definitely reach out. If you already have a bookkeeper, then you know you can definitely bring up some of these topics to your bookkeeper and see if they can help you as well. Um, the best way to contact me you can, is uh, by email, maya at solvencynow.com. You can go to my website, solvencynow.com. You can send a message here on Facebook. You can reply into this message thread. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, Instagram, Maya Weinrub, Solvency Now. You'll find me under both of those. And, um, and like I said, I am here to help. So I want business owners to succeed. It's in all of our best interests and it's in the best interest of our country, our, the economy, your family, yourself. So I'm here to help. I want business owners to succeed. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm gonna put in my email address right here and my website. And I look forward to hearing from you. And if you are not watching this live, then you can still send me questions, again, either on Facebook, email, Instagram. Um, send a smoke signal, I will probably see it, especially now that I'm done with my part of tax season and I'm not staying up quite so late. Okay, um, perfect. Uh, thank you all so much for joining and I'll see you next week, same time at the Bottom Line Live.